Hello, my name is Zoe Vanzino, and I am going to go over the custom mechanics I made for my DES4 level project. So, I will first start by demonstrating one of the ones that I have created, which is a minecart that when the player steps inside of it, it begins moving after a short delay and then stops at a specific point. So here's the minecart. Once the player steps on, it moves and then comes to a stop. So the minecart itself it is all very simple. In my viewport here, I have the minecart modeled out, which is just a cube with a spotlight. And then I have a very simple setup here for my blueprint. I have added a collision volume on the minecart here so that when the player steps on it, it begins moving. So the first thing I do is get the world location for the initial location of the minecart, and then I set that to a variable, and then I set a final location variable, which I had a bug with where it was originally a target point, but I had to change it last minute, so I just hard-coded in the exact location I need the minecart to go to. So as soon as the actor steps into the minecart, I check a variable which I use for my statistics at the end of my level. I give it 0.5 seconds, and then I'm using a timeline, move the minecart with a lerp from that initial to that final location, and then I set the world location. Very simple, very easy. The second mechanic I want to demonstrate is my chest that opens. So walking across the bridge, there's the chest. So walking up to the chest, it prompts press F to open. Hitting F opens up the chest. Again, another very simple mechanic. I have the chest here set up where it's just some cubes, and I've given it a text, a text render and a collision volume. So when the player walks into that collision volume, I set the visibility of the text render so that it pops up and says, please press F to open. And then after that, after a short delay, I hide it again just so it's not permanently there. And then once the player does press F, I use again a timeline and a lerp to rotate open the top lid, set the location, and then here I'm also marking another boolean which I use for my statistics at the end of my level. The third mechanic I would like to demonstrate is this headlamp. So here on the ground there is a headlamp. Once the player steps over it, it goes up and attaches to the player's head. The headlamp itself is very simple, just a cube with a spotlight on it and a collision sphere. So, I have it once the character, the player, walks onto that overlap and triggers that overlap event. I got the actor of the class, which is the third person character, and snap the component, specifically the cube that has the children of the spotlight and the cylinder, to a specific socket on the player skeletal mesh that I created myself for this purpose. After it does that, it again sets a variable which I use for my statistics at the end of my level. The final mechanic I would like to showcase is my opening door at the end of my level. So once the player picks a path, walks down it, and reaches the end of the level, they are greeted with this gate. So walking up to the gate, it prompts them press F to open. Once the player hits F, the door swings open. Again. Another very simple mechanic, so set up quite the same way. I have two cubes and a cylinder that has this right door as its child. And when the player walks in to the overlap, I open that prompt and tell it to show the text render, give it a couple seconds, and then let it disappear again just so it's not there permanently. When it sees the player has pressed F, Using a timeline, again, I have a lerp to rotate specifically the cylinder to a location. I used a cylinder specifically to make sure that this and the door both rotated because originally it was just the door. I was having issues, so I gave it its own specific pivot point. Uh, another quick little notable mechanic I would like to bring up is I made some lights that flash. So I have made 
this specific light blink, which is just very simple. When the, the, the game starts, this point light, I toggle its visibility on and off, putting a delay in between it just to give it a consistent blink. On top of that, I have a lamp, which also has a flicker effect on it. So I picked two values that I figured would look the most realistic when trying to imitate a flame. So for this lantern, I wanted it to be uh, a flame. So it flickers like that to imitate that. And then the cave lights also do the same thing, except not as dramatically because I wanted them modeled after light bulbs, which do flicker, but not as intensely as flames do. So that is a quick little summary of all of my custom mechanics that I made for this level, and thank you for watching.